Hello everyone! For this video, we're going to talk about decels for group data. Now, what is our learning target for this video? I can determine the decels for group data. Now, these are the following guide questions that hopefully you can answer after watching this video. So, before anything else, let us have a short recap of what are decels. So, decels are score points that divide the distribution into 10 equal parts. And with that, our formula to get the decels for group data would be this one. As you can see, since this um, divides the data into 10 equal parts, and with that, you can see in the formula that here we do have here the value 10. Uh. So actually, this is the only difference in the formula that we've used for quartiles and percentiles before. So for quartiles, um, we make use of uh, our divisor here as 4, and for percentile, we make use 100. So this time, since we talk about decile, so it would be 10. And then the rest of the terms would be the same. And how are we going to identify the value use of the following terms it would be the same with what we did or what are the criteria that we've used in identifying or determining the values of the following so let us have uh, our first problem so that you will be able to understand thoroughly and how are we going to get the value of our desired decile for group data so here is our first problem guys and you are supposed to find out the decile 1, decile 4, and decile 8. And as you can see, I've given already the frequency distribution table or the data in FDT. And with that, um, you may now proceed with the computation itself of our desired decile. So take note guys that if in case that I've given you the raw scores, then of course you need to start with making your own frequency distribution table based on the preferred class that I've given you. But this time, so luckily, the data given is already in frequency distribution table. And with that, so let us start with getting the value of our first decile. So of course, before you uh, um, consider your formula, let us first complete our frequency distribution table with our less than cumulative frequency. So whatever the steps I've given to you before in dealing with percentiles and uh, quartiles for group data to fill in the less than cumulative frequency column, it would be the same with this um, scenario, guys. So, of course, let's gonna start with the frequency of our lowest class interval and that is 3 and then add with 5 and then add with 12 again and so on and with that, we can have this one. So, as, as you can see, we do have our highest last and cumulative frequencies, 30. It corresponds to our value of n, therefore, we can assure that our um, less than cumulative frequency column is uh, filled in uh, correctly. So now, let us proceed with identifying the D of 1 class. So of course, we're going to use our formula K times N divided by 10. So substituting K is 1 because we are looking for the first decile, so 1. And then 30 refers to our N, so the total number of frequency. Or maybe you're asking again, where did we get the total number of frequency? Of course, this one. We just simply add all of this frequency, 2 plus 8, plus 12, plus 5, plus 3, it's 30. Okay, so going back to this, 1 times 30, so we would have 30 divided by 10. And with that, we can say our D of 1 class is 3, or so third term. So that means, so this belongs to what class interval? So of course, let's gonna highlight. So here, so let's base again in less than cumulative frequency. So we have here 3, so therefore it belongs to the class interval 70 to 74. And with that, we can now determine or identify the necessary data for our formula. And I've mentioned a while ago, so um, whatever the steps I told you or I taught you before for percentiles and quartiles in determining the following terms it would be the same process here right now so lower boundary so since our lip um, lower limit here is 70 so just deduct 0 0.5 we would have 69.5 
n is 30 cumulative frequency below is zero because there's nothing no class intervals already here before 70 to 74 and frequency of our d1 class is 3 and lastly our i is 5 i know you can still remember how to get the value of i if the fdt is already given in the problem now since our necessary data is already complete let us now substitute in our formula and apply the the proper way of uh, our PEMDAS rule or simplifying of uh, um, various operations here. So with that, we can have 69.5 plus 5, so we would have 74.5. So that means D of 1 is equal to 74.5. If you are in doubt or if you wanna check if we got the correct answer, you may just refer on our previous lesson or previous video lesson. I provided the same data there and uh, we looked for P of 10 as well there and uh, you check th there and actually we got 74.5 again and uh, i do hope you can still remember a while ago that we um relate the um decile to percentile we're in we concluded that decile 1 is equivalent to p of 10 decile 2 is equivalent to p of 20 and the rest okay so here d of 1 it is equivalent to p of 10 and in our previous um lesson for percentile for group data we look for p of 10 as well there with the same data here the same frequency distribution table and uh, I already confirmed that we got the same answer which is 74.5 and therefore it's correct now moving on so we are asked to find out as well the fourth decile for this group data and uh, we already completed the the frequency distribution table with the less than cumulative frequency already and now we can proceed with identifying the d of 4 class by by using our formula k times n divided by 10 so this time so we are supposed to substitute 4 since we're looking for d of 4 and times our n which is 30 so 4 times 30 it's 120 divided by 10 so this time d of 4 class is 12 so let's gonna look for 12 here in our less than cumulative frequency column um where does 12 belong so it belongs to what class interval so as you can see it belongs to here 20 less than cumulative frequency therefore the class interval where it belongs is 80 to 84 and with that we can have the necessary data already so lower limit is 80 therefore lower boundary of our d4 class is 79.5 and the rest of the terms so determine the following and we have here already and we may now substitute in our formula and again apply the PEMDAS properly and with that we do have 81.17 so here in this problem we do have we don't have a corresponding problem there in my previous example for percentiles for group data but I am pretty sure that this computation is already correct okay so we got 81.17 Next is we are asked to find out D of 8 as well. So, of course, let's find out the D of 8 class. So, same pattern, same formula, same process. So, 8 times 30 divided by 10, we would have 24. So, D of 8 belongs to what class interval? So, it's since it's 24, so this belongs to this less than cumulative frequency. And what class interval? So, this would be 85 to 89. And now we can identify or determine the necessary data and let's substitute in our formula. So again, proper um, application of our PEMDAS rule. So for those who cannot um, understand yet or who cannot master yet the PEMDAS rule, we just simply process first those um, values inside our parentheses. But it so happened that we do have here the fraction. So let's gonna process first here in our numerator so we do have 8 times 30 240 divided by 10 is 24 then 24 minus 20 we would have 4 and then right after that let's process that together with the denominator which is 8 4 divided by 8 we would have 0 0.5 multiplied with 5 and we would have 2.5 and lastly 
we can have 84.5 plus 2.5 it's 87 and here in this case we also look for percentile 80 there in our previous lesson and if you're going to check we got 87 there as well and that means we're pretty sure that we got the correct value for d of 8 for the same data here okay so i'm gonna show you again our interpretation for um, our answers a while ago maybe some of you forgot already how to put the interpretation so I'm gonna put here uh, first all the values that we've got a while ago so for D of 1 we do have 74.5 so we can say that approximately so since it's D of 1 therefore we can say that there would be 10% of our data which will be lower or less than the D of 1 that we've got so um, 10 percent or let's get how many students would be equivalent of our 10 percent out of uh, what is our value of n a while ago it's 30 so 10 percent of 30 that is equivalent to three students so therefore we can say that approximately 10 percent or three of the students got a score lower than the d1 that we've got which is 74.5 and of course um reverse um scenario of that so if that there would be 10 percent lower than the d1 therefore we can say that 90 percent so we just simply subtract 10 percent from 100 percent so we can say 90 90 percent or 27 of the students got a score higher than the d1 that we've solved or the specifically we can write the value of the d1 that you computed so which is 74.5 so by the way you can use the word approximately or almost so um, either of the two words I'm I will accept so approximately 10% or almost 10% or three of the students get a score lower than 74.5 and almost 90% or 27 of the students get a score higher than 74.5 and as easy as that so of course let's move on with our d of 4 so if you're going to visualize d of 4 then we can say there would be four groups that would be lower than the value of d of 4 that you've got and therefore you can say that 40 percent or 12 so approximately or almost 40 percent of the students get a score lower than the value of the d4 that you've got and of course so if we're going to deduct 40 percent from the total percentage of uh, the data which is 100 percent so 40 deducted from 100 so the remaining percent would be 60 so that means 60 percent or 18 of the students get a score higher than the d of 4 that you've got so as easy as that in same manner with d of 8 so of course if we're going to visualize again there would be eight groups that would be lower than the d of 8 value that you've got so with that you can say approximately 80 percent or 24 of the students get a score lower than 87 and approximately 20% or 6 of the students got a score higher than 87 and uh, as simple as that now so hopefully you understand already how are you going to get the desired value of decils for group data at the same time how are you going to interpret the result or the value that you've got on a particular um, decils um, being computed and with that i'd like you to try this problem okay so this would be your problem number two so i'd like you to pause the video for a while and if you're done you may resume watching the video but actually i will not provide the solution for this but i'm gonna give you the final answer so i'd like you to discover on your own but in this problem do you think um here in our um the character here in our problem we do have xiao nai and yunwo so do you think both will be part of the scholarship program or one of them or no one so actually um, after computing the given data so i found out that yun Wu will be the one who will be accepted in the scholarship given based on the 
qualification stated that they should be um, part of the top 10% of uh, their graduating class. And um, after the computation, so Yun Mu got a higher score than than the um, D of 9 or let's say he belongs to the top 10% scorer while Xiao Nai didn't belong to the higher 10% top scorer. So somehow a little bit lower than the value of your D of 9. That is why um, only Yun Wu um, will be given a scholarship based here in our given problem. So guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you on our next video lesson. Bye!